bring over my stuff from here to there. So we'll figure something out by the time that gets to it. Um, wanted to review the flag quiz game and, and specifically review the stuff that was new in, in the flag quiz game. And I gave an activity. Um, did, did any of you try the activity? I didn't get a chance. Okay. I played a little bit. Okay. All right. That's okay. That's okay. Um, one, it's a good way to kind of uh, learn uh, programming by like taking a program and altering it. You know, and, and that's a good way. So even with myself, like I said, I don't necessarily consider myself, uh, I don't have as much experience in this environment as I do in other environments. So I'm still wanting to stay sharp on this. So I'm, you know, I looked at this and I, I hated the way the quiz worked. <laughs> and so I wanted to change it. I like the fact that you go until you get 10 correct answers. Ask the question 10 times. If you get it wrong, you get it wrong, you know. So anyhow, uh, so I wanted to do that and I wanted to have some fun with animations and I wanted to play with menus. So those are the main things that, that I altered uh, in that. So let's consider the uh, application and let's talk about what is different in this application from the other ones uh, that we have covered so far. All right. Um, they have, um, let's see, there, there's a good list in the book. That's one thing I like about this book is in each chapter they show you like the new stuff that's in there. So that, that's a good thing to sort of review as you're going through it. If you look at it's on page 164. They talk about the use of assets in this. They talk about a menu. They talk about having a delay in the application. So as it shows whether you've gotten the answer right or not, it delays for a second. The animations which are fun. This is a particular style of animation called tween animations. Um, tween animations essentially are where you specify um, some behavior for uh, an element, uh, uh, you know, and, and it does it. Some straightforward behavior whereas the, the, the the, the application generates the frame. So for example, they're moving the flag back and forth. You don't have to do a frame by frame animation for that. You say, start it off at this position, move it to x plus 1, move it to x plus 2. So you can give parameters like that as opposed to some extensive animation if you're animating a person that, you know, that is having some sort of complex movements. So. Uh, those kind of tween animations are pretty straightforward and, and we'll, we'll uh, cover that. They do talk about Java uh, or logging exceptions and Java data structures. Well, I'd like to start out, and again, I'm going to start out reviewing the application as it's listed in the book and then we'll get to, to my enhancements of it. Okay, I'll show you that in a second here. Okay, so here's the actual app. The question was, is how do you bring up the menu um, in, in the app? Um, there, there, there's a little bit of difference depending on the Android device, but essentially on the Android device you have like a handful of buttons. All right. Uh, sometimes they're like real buttons, sometimes they're virtual buttons. And we really can't see that here. I'm going to try zooming. Down here on the bottom of the device, oh, we can't see it. Let me just hold it. You have one button, right? No, I have a bunch of, I have a bunch of buttons. I have four, well, not a bunch, I have four. All right. There is this button here, which is a little like a rectangle. That is the menu button. 
You then have this button, it's the home button, that takes you to the home screen. You have this menu, which is a uh, button, which is a back button, that takes you whatever the last activity was. And then finally you have this button, which is a search button. Let me go and set the time out of this thing so it's not going off constantly. But yeah, that, that's one of, the, that's one of the, the four buttons that you get on an Android. And the way they are, uh, uh, it, it just, that sort of thing sort of uh, varies a little bit with the, um, with the uh, specific device. Right. Right. Yeah, and, and that's that's how my that's how my phone is, I believe. Um, you'd think I'd know that, right? But so anyhow, this particular device has these four buttons. My phone, on the other hand, has if I can find it. Well, it has the same buttons down there. I guess it does have hardware buttons. But I've seen them where the buttons are software buttons, where, where they're, they're just touch spots on the screen. All right. So anyhow, one of the buttons is, is the menu button. So if we go to this and we can't really see the button, but you have to trust me, if I press that first button, which is a menu button, then up pops a little menu. All right, and right now the two options are select number of choices and select the regions. If any of you tried this quiz, this is tough. Yeah. I mean, I a, there's a lot of flags. Uh, I don't. I I probably hit around seventy percent. You know, uh, just from like context clues. Like, okay, this one I know Jamaican's flag doesn't look like this. I don't think that's about Bahrain. Typically, Islamic countries oftentimes have the crescent moon and star in it. So I'm going to guess Zimbabwe. Ah, Bahrain. All right, second choice. This one. Cape Verde. Darn, Lithuania. That was my second choice. That is Trinidad. Yay. This is not Taiwan. I don't even know what that one is. We'll guess Montserrat. Yes. This one. Trinidad. Darn it. I just, I, you know, I just got Trinidad, Tuvala. All right, this one. No, it's not China. Not Jordan. We'll say Christmas Island. Estonia. Yeah. Greece. And this one. That's not Jordan. I don't know what the Turks Islands are. I'll guess that one. Shoot. All right. And that's Saudi Arabia. So, yeah, 70%. All right. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, notice it has a cute animation. It shakes it from side to side, and it has a menu and all that. And, and that's what we're going to look at as we go through and examine uh, the application. And again, because of my not having the adapter, we're going to first show it uh, on, on this uh, on this screen, um, and then, then, then I'll try to get my pages loaded, um, or, or my uh, uh, files loaded so we can review it. All right, let's start off. Um, they have, uh, let's see, a couple of, of new things. As I said, there are assets, and within the assets there are folders that have all the images. All right. There is same sort of values that we saw before, different XML files, won't really talk about that. There is um, the main, which is the main view. Then there's that inflatable view for the, the buttons that, that show up. Because remember, one of the things you can do with this is you can say on the menu, I want to change the number of choices. So I'll make it nine choices. And then it displays nine choices instead of that. So in other words, it's not set for a certain number of buttons. It's not hard-coded. Those buttons sort of like get inflated 
in there. Kind of using the same technique that we used uh, before. So that's not really new. We, we've gone over that sort of thing before. All right. The animation. All right. And they have it, and again, it's stored in an XML file, which if you think about it, is pretty neat because we can then go and apply that animation to any control on the screen, right, or in any of the element uh, or view on, on the screen, um, which if you think, for example, for your uh, rock, paper, scissors, you can have a winning animation, you can have a losing animation, and depending on circumstances, you can apply the one or the other. All right, to, to uh, whatever uh, control you want. Again, if we look, whoops, we can look at this and we'll see again it's an XML file. We're, we're specifying how it is, uh, you know, going to be implemented. There are several different options you have for this and I'd encourage you to have fun with this and play with it and do whatever you want with it. Um, in this case, the translate um, animation is to change the position of it. So, this animation actually is composed of like three little steps. All right, each one of these tags inside is a step. And we can define like a duration. We can define when the step starts. Or, or I'm sorry, um, I did a little backwards. We can define when the step starts and we can then define the duration of the animation. Um, then when we actually run the, va uh, the, the, the animation, we can, uh, we can specify it to repeat a certain number of times. So I think, like for example, if we get this wrong, kind of have to watch it in slow motion. It goes back and forth a couple different times because we've chosen to repeat the animation. Um, if we, you can have that performed on any object, right. Or, the, the flip side, you can perform a different animation on this object. Like one of the things that I, I wanted for the exercise and we'll, we'll look at uh, in a bit is if you get the question right, it should do something too, right? It, it should be happy. It should do something, all right? So I tried to make a happy animation if, if, if you got the, the thing right. If we look at this again, we translate from x delta zero. So the x coordinate um, let's see, starts with the x position of zero, moves minus 5% p, and then again it's changing and it's going back and forth between it, so it does a little shake. Again, the x coordinate on the xy the, would be the horizontal, and you know it goes negative 5%, uh, percent. then it goes from negative 5, delta being the change in position, all right, to positive 5, and then it goes again from positive 5 back to negative 5. So it kind of does that little shake. Do you know, is that in relation to its starting point? It's yeah, relation to the point, yeah. And again, the duration is 100, I believe that's milliseconds, so that'd be like a tenth of a second. And um, there's no starting time for the first one, which means that that starts right at the start. The other ones then, if you notice, are, are timed 100 milliseconds after. So, um, so the first little translate happens, the second, then the third. Each one of them takes uh, 100 milliseconds and they start one right after another. So you could do things simultaneously, all right? Yeah, in the same file. You could, you could rotate something as you're spinning it or, or whatever, all right? Um, the, the things that you can do with this, um, let me see if I can remember them all. You can rotate, so you can rotate uh, a thing. You can resize a thing and you can, I believe, change the opacity of it. So like you could fade it out, all right? So these are all val valuable um, um, sorts sort of little animations that you can do. And when you think about it, um, given the, the, those kinds of animations, again, don't require like hand drawing each frame. It doesn't require the frame by frame sort of animation. You know, you have it, you can, see, you can easily adjust the parameters of it to move it, to rotate it, whatever. And again, that's why it's called tween. You sort of generate the rules and it generates all the steps that it needs to do that. So that's the animation. Um, 
let's look at, let's see, let's look at, oh, let's look at the manifest, because I believe there was something unusual in the manifest. Um, one thing that was, that was unusual about the, um, manifest is that, um, it lacks the screen orientation of portrait on this one. All right. That's not just the starting position. That's... Right. In other words, uh, yeah, in other words, if I rotate this, it doesn't move. All right. Yeah, so. Uh -huh. And then when I turned it, the list disappeared. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is they set a theme to this so that there's no title bar. In other words, if you look, there's no bar on the top like there was with the other ones that showed the name uh, of the application. So a couple little things that they did with this. Um, one thing that you will also put in this eventually um, I don't know why I just thought of this, um, it, it is um, if any special permissions are required uh, for this. That way when, uh, when the person's installing it, we'll tell them, this might update your SD card, this might require uh, internet connection, you know, and so on down the line. So that also appears in the, um, in the manifest. All right, let me look at my notes here. Um, okay. Let's then look at now, the code. So, so if you're doing, like for rock, scissors, paper, we're doing huh? four or five different versions. Is it possible in a manifest to just say version name equals 1.1, 1.2? Oh, yeah. And that's how you could differentiate? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right there, up there, the version name, you can specify the version associated with that. And then, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Let's look at the Java code for this. And there's a couple of things right off the bat that we'll talk about and we will, um, to be honest, I, 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 I have to, I, one, I have to look up a list, a list construct. Um, why is it different than an array or why is it different than an array list? I have to, I have to confess I don't know that one off the top of my head. Let's look that one up. I mean, we get the sense of a list being, you know, a list of items. In this case, it's a list of strings. But specifically why you would use that instead of an array or even an array list, I'm not sure. You can't add them to an array. Well, yeah, but you can also do that to an array list. All right. Oh, an array list implements a list. Okay. So they're, they're related. All right. Public interface extends collection. An ordered collection, all right. This is a higher level of array list. Yeah. List. Yeah, the, the array list in Harris. Okay, yeah. So that's why we did that. You're right there. That's why we didn't do it instead of an array. We can make the size of it dynamic, all right. Um, again, why they chose to do that instead of an array list uh, is probably just a matter of preference. What's a map? And it's confusing that this sort of relates to geography because that's not that kind of map. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. A map, um, I used to call her that as like a hash where you, you have a value. It's like an ordered pair. You have a value and you have an attribute associated with it. So instead of, um, instead of uh, the list elements be indexed by a numerical index like element one, uh, zero, element one, element two, you have an element called something, all right? Um, let's see. 
Yeah, in this case what they have is they have regions. And it, the, the name of the region is the sort of the key into it. And the Boolean of whether to show that um, is, uh, is the value. So you can, in other words, you can say you can get from the map, you could give it North America or whatever, and it would return the value. So you can look it up that way. So that's just a different sort of thing to do. The handler here is to um, do, the, uh, do the time, uh, time delay where it displays the answer. Uh, uh, apparently not. Apparently this is the way, yeah. Yeah, apparently this is the way to implement it. Yep. It is funny though, sometimes you see that and you think it's odd until, like maybe if you start using a lot, and then it, it starts to make sense, you know. The thing about it is, I mean, you, you're basically just creating a threat. Right. But at the end of the threat, I guess you are uh, implicitly waiting. Right. All right, all this stuff is stuff that we've seen before. For the most part, random number, a handler. All right, we load the animation. All right, we use this uh, animation utility class up here or where? Oh, we use the okay. We use this the static uh, method on the on the animation utilities class to load the animation that we define in our XML file and we set the repeat count. That's why it does it a couple of times. All right. Um, the shake animation is declared as an animation again and, and then we use this utility to load that XML file and actually create an animation object that we can apply to it. Notice at this point we don't apply it to anything. We can do that later on. All right. Um, here we're populating our arrays. We default each array to being show, uh, or each region to be showed uh, as true. We grab some references to things, and then we call the reset quiz method. All right. Reset quiz method um, goes and looks through and looks to see if the region is enabled. Here's a slightly different way to loop through an array. Um, you're probably familiar with that syntax that uh, loops through every element uh, in, in that uh, list. Um, we see if it's enabled and then we add that to um, get a list of all the flags associated with that um, region. And then we tack on a .png onto the end of the image name. We initialize some variables. We pull a list of we pull a list of uh, countries that we want to be testing. We actually gather ten countries that we want to list, so we loop through ten times. What's this line do? It yeah, you're not, you're not going to ask them what you know Brazil's flag is twice, and then we load next flag method, which goes and displays that. We use this to bring in the act, the the image. and create our drawable that we set our image view to. Here's where we're logging exception errors which can be valuable um, in debugging. All right, And then we display the options based on the number of um, buttons that we said uh, that we wanted. All right. 
So that's kind of how it happens when it fires up. Let's look at the menu functionality now. Um, the menu, to, to create that, really what we need to do is simply extend stuff that is already there in the framework. All right. In other words, there's already code for creating the menu and we're extending that to create our specific menu for that. You know, that, that's part of the activity, you know. These, the, the, the Androids app know there's a little menu button that you could press and get the menu, therefore, um, you know, uh, we can go and do that. So, in this case what we do is we add two items. Um, we give them each an ID which is, um, I assume is just a sequence number, 0, 1. They do it using the static variable. All right. And we pull the value of the, the, the literal or the text from our uh, resources. We then return true to display the menu. All right. So the menu is being displayed. All right. So that's effectively what, what this code does, is it creates the menu and displays it. This is a code that happens when the selection is made. All right. First thing we do, this, this function, this method, again, this is something we're extending, this building of the framework. This method gets passed which menu item was selected. So we can examine that. And so we have a case statement to look to see which item was selected. So we grab the ID from that. Is it this one? Or is it that one? All right. And if they've selected um, the choice of how many uh, options to choose, we go and we loop through and we create um, three options in our little choice builder here, which is a dialog that we're creating, all right, a modal window, which is going to pop up. And we set the title of that to choices. We loop through, and each time we loop through, all right, we create Ah, we're actually setting multiple items. My mistake with this. I thought we had a loop where we were setting them individually. We're grabbing the list of values from the guesses array. So um, in, in the resources, there's a guess array that shows how many, what options we want to we wanna give them. In this case, we want to give them the choice of three, six, or nine. All right. And as we add it, we set an on click listener for this dialog that's going to grab the item that was selected and it's going to set the number of rows of buttons to display to whatever option they picked. All right. It's interesting that they that, that that in this they show the number of rows of buttons instead of like limiting the number of buttons. So like you couldn't make this a multiple choice with two buttons then. You know, you're doing a whole row or not at all. All right. Regions we have a similar thing. We create our dialog builder. All right. We populate we use that uh, or we populate that dialog builder. Then we display the dialog and we create an on-click event to go in and handle that and, and set the flag so that um, the appropriate things will be displayed or not. All right.
the idea here, again, is in this function we define the menu options. In this function we define how to handle the respective um, options that are selected. All right. Let's see what happens if they make a guess. All right. All right. We have loaded the flag. We've looked at this before. We've looped through the number of rows and again we've gone and we're going to expand, use that inflator to add a button for each one of those choices. So we have our buttons of rows and each of these have associated with them somewhere the click listener event. All right. Which we don't define as an anonymous class, but we have um, actually yeah, we, we define it as as a class down here. That's what fires whenever that's what fires when they make a choice. Each one of the buttons gets yeah, e each one of these buttons gets that and the same listener, right. But notice that associated with the listener is a particular view. So the view being the button. So when this, when one of the buttons, each one of these buttons has the same listener. So when a button is clicked, this listener gets called and that listener gets past the button that got clicked. All right, if that makes sense. Yeah, the, the reference to the button that got clicked. So then we can go here and we can submit the guess. All right. And what do we pass to submit the guess? We pass the button that got clicked. All right. Is that the way we have to do it? No. All right. We could, in this case, um, we could pull the text off the button and pass our submit guess the text of the country that we want as opposed to passing the button. But they chose to do it this way. It is important, now, now again, you folks have uh, seem like you have a pretty good grip on, on uh, Java programming, but for some students that are first learning it, the fact that you can pass like non-primitives is really confusing to people. All right. So I think people, after they've done a little bit of programming, get used to the idea of you can give an integer, you can give a boolean, you can do that. But like when they start thinking like you can pass a button to something, you know, that, that kind of blows their mind. But again, they do it here and, and that's a good, uh, good demonstration. So, all right. So we then, since we got the button, we grab the button or the text of the button. We grab what the correct answer is. We increment the number of answers. Then we look to see if they're correct or not. All right, if they're correct, we increment that. Blah, blah, blah. We see if they've hit 10 correct answers, which I thought was dumb. You know, it should just go until there's 10 questions are asked, not, but that's the way they did it. If they are wrong, That's when we apply to that view the start animation method and we apply the shake animation to it. I would think that you could start it on any on any view, I would think. Let's uh I would think so. I I would guess, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I I wouldn't have
Yeah, look what it looks like that's on a view, yeah. All right. Something doesn't like, uh, something about this page isn't loading. It's just sitting there. Yeah, all right. Start animation on a view. All right. That is something um, that is good to note, by the way, just as a reminder. Notice that here we cast that view as a button because the on click could be on any view. All right. That listener could be applied to a button. We could apply that to, to the flag, for example. If uh, maybe if you click on the flag, up pops a hint or something, let's say. But um, so we cast that to the button here. Here, though, there's no need to cast it because we've declared that as, as a button. It's getting past a button, so therefore we don't have to cast it as a button. It knows it's a button. Then we set some text colors and, and so on. Here is a delayed uh, part that simply creates a, um, uses that handler to create a little thing that sits a um, thousand milliseconds. All right. What's that? Oh, hints. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a very good one. Maybe even just display the region that it's from, even, might be useful. A hint. Okay. Yeah. So, well, that would be like when you hover When you hover over it, or maybe when you click on the flag, or, or something like that. Yeah, right, 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 right. You nine buttons, yeah. Yeah, that was my disclaimer. All my seventy percent were achieved on the three button, uh, on the three button uh, thing. All right. Yeah, really. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attempt to transfer my files over, um, and. All right, so let me show you my alteration to it. Actually, no, that, this one, what I was running was fresh out of the box. Yeah. Yeah, or, or possibly something with the screen resolution, or it's hard to say. Let's see.
All right. As long as I can see the code. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I, I have I have difficulties. Yeah. I don't I don't know. Right. 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 Mine I'm pretty sure it was a version thing, uh, but uh, again we can we can talk about that after yeah. after class. Well, it's your call. We we can do it if you need to. All right. Here's my changes to this. First of all, it doesn't ask you over and over again. If you get it wrong, you're wrong. Deal with it. So this is Armenia, let's say. Oh, and look, if you get it right, it rotates. Yeah. <laughs> United Kingdom. Yay. Thailand. Yay. Uh, wrong. Syria. Yay. Notice you only get one choice, though. So you press Ghana. If that's not it, you then go on to the next one. Yeah. Vatican City and... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Vietnam. Yay. We've seen this one, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Yeah, huh. Oop. I swear it popped it up. Oh, well. Oop, maybe we can look and find what's wrong with it. All right. Or, if I was a little quicker on my feet, I'd say I did that on purpose so that your job now is over the weekend. Uh, all right. But, alas, I'm not. Uh, now, uh, so, so what do we add? We added the fact that it only goes through uh, one at a time. All right, uh, and only allows you one guess, and then it moves on to the next. <laughs> that was less to demonstrate programming than it just bothered me. Right. No. No, I, uh, I thought I'd handle that. I'll, I'll, we'll take a look at the code and see and see. The one thing I did obviously is I did a um, I added a new menu option to disable animation. So you click on that and you can enable or disable animation. And so if animation is disabled, if I get it wrong, it shows me it's wrong, but it doesn't do uh, animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very similar to the other ones. All right, so, so we'll, we'll go and we'll take a look at it. No, I did not do that. Yeah, that 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 I I just I just created my three menu items and and it decided to put them that way. All right. So let's look at at the things I've added and, and maybe even find out what is wrong with this. All right. 
Uh, first thing I added was the animation. And this did not load correctly, but I can at least pull up the files that I want to show you. And so I created a second XML file called Correct Animation. By the way, just a small bone to pick. I don't like the fact that it says Incorrect Shake Animation. Why do you think I don't like that name? Right. It, doesn't make sense. it doesn't make sense. And what if I decide I don't want the animation to shake? What if I want the animation to fade the opacity of the image or to make the image smaller or make it bigger or something like that? Then you have a shake animation that does something other than shaking. All right. So it's always good, even like in, in web development, we talk about creating your classes and IDs. Don't use descriptive terms about what they look like. Talk about functionality. So I would have preferred to call this incorrect animation and correct animation. Anyhow, that being said, I suppose, yeah, I suppose. All right. And well, all this is is a rotate, uh, which uh, again, um, since I'm going from 0 to 360, that's all the way around. Uh, the pivot is halfway the width uh, and halfway the height. That's why it pivots around the center. If I were to make those 0, 0, it would like pivot on the corner of it. All right. The duration, um, a second, and start offset, I'm not sure what that means, but it's 0. <laughs> All right, so I have that animation. Let's carry it through and look at the rest of the uh, animation. I think that's from where it's at on the Probably, yeah. Probably. Right, right. And so I have, I declared my instance variable for a second animation. All right. Did the same thing with the first animation of using that utility to load from the XML file and therefore initialize the uh, animation object. Set the repeat count for three. And then all I do when you make a guess is if they got it right and animations enabled. We'll look at that in a second. That's the menu option I had. If they get it right, then play the correct animation. Otherwise, down here, we play the incorrect animation. When you're looking through my code, um, anything that I put in, I, I prefix with the comment new code. So, so you should be able to, to easily identify that. So that was neat. And again, it's a case of separating stuff. You know, the, the animation then isn't tied to that particular view. It's just an animation that's out there that says to do this. And then you can apply it, or again, you can to uh, a view apply a different animation, a second animation. All right, so that's the animation. Let's look at the menu next. Um, the menu All right, declared an ID for it, which is first plus two, so it's now the third one in the line. I add to the menu my menu ID with the string animation. So again, what do you have with the menu? You create the menu, then you process the display of it. Here is when um, I've selected a menu option. I've added one case to my case statement. I create a dialog builder for the animation to disable or, or enable the animation. I then set the items with the enable options, which are in my resources file.
For some reason I had the old one. Here's my enable animation options. An array, enable and disable. And I create an on-click listener that's listening to see which one of those two got clicked. If the zeroth one got clicked, the zeroth element is enabled, so I go and enable that. If uh, otherwise, disabled animation. And that's an instance variable on this, on this um, activity. And then I set it for that and I use that before I apply any of the animations. All right. Last thing is, is that, that nagging thing of, of it not displaying my answers. All right, let's see. All right, if guess equals answer, I play that animation. If I got it right, I increment. Here I have if total guesses equals 10. Oh, you know what? Total guesses equals 10. Yeah, I need to. I'm going to do something very inelegant. I'm just going to copy this code. What I should do is put this in a function, obviously, but in the interest of time, that code belongs there. Did I forget to? I think it did it automatically for me. So, yeah. I didn't, um, probably what happened was when I was testing this, I got the last one right, in which case the, the display worked. And, and my code was wrong when the last one's wrong. We can test that out if we want. Let's see. I did go and put the next, display the next um, one in its own function. All right, see, if you get it right, it displays the last way, it displays that. I just, I'm missing that code there. But yeah, the, the code to display the next flag, previously it only displayed the next flag if it was right, so that code was embedded in there. So I took and I moved that in there, I forgot to do the same thing with that alert window. Because if you're wrong on the last question, you still need to display the alert window. So. If you are uh, a perfectionist and you want to make that change, you're welcome to, uh, to, do, to do that. All right. Any questions about any of this? Pardon me? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh... Okay. Yeah. I, I do urge, urge you to, to again, um, you know, to, to play with these and, and to take the, the, the basic application and, and again, you know, just, you know, it's useful to see, you know, besides adding functionality, you know, to make a change you have to, you have to really look through and, and examine their code. So it's good to like give your, you know, give yourself little challenges or again, uh, I did for that activity. Um, if you want to, again, I have uploaded my example, but I would encourage you to try to do those things, um, to go in and, and try to change the functionality. The most important one being, uh, I would say, being the menu option and playing with the animation, because that's the new things. The other stuff was just messing with the programming logic, not 
not really um, anything anything critical to this unit. Let's see. That's a good question. Menus typically, I've I've seen them pop up like that. Maybe that's the default, but Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think we have the answer to our question. Options menu, men, uh, and defining a menu in XML. Yeah, I mean, I intuitively, my answer to almost any of those questions is yeah. You know, given the degree of control that you have and 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 the the, the manner in which it's built, sort of in a component-based architecture, you can you know plug one thing in and and change like radically uh, maybe the way it looks or whatever. Hey, you know, one thing, one thing I had a question about on this particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I, I do know that the shared preferences are uh, do only take primitives. So, like to store, yeah, to 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 anything like that. Yeah, um, um, I, I do have to confess, I'm not sure if you wanted to store something other than a primitive. You know, maybe the must be the parcel or parcelable is is what you need to do. Because it's a string? But you should just yeah, do it properly. You should just do it unsorted. Well, what I ended up doing was I ended up, uh, instead of using it, it was a graph of the time. And so, yeah, that's what I thought. Based on the, yeah. the, you know, the right. minutes, seconds, that's what I thought. Okay. And as well. And that, that I guess, was still worked better than that. Right. Because I just did that, and, you know, some of the words with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Well, we'll see you next week then.